Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sounded good.
Amen. Loved the world so much he gave. Amen. You know, to give is to be like God. To be a giver, right? Praise God. We love you guys. Before uh, uh, they get ready and go and have a song while we bring you offering, I want us to join together in prayer, a very special prayer today for Strong Tower Baptist Church. Brother Press, old pastor there. He's got a tragically uh, their son. He was just a teenager, 14, and uh, tragically he lost him. He passed away this past week. Actually, what night before last? But let's pray a special prayer for that church today. Uh, they're having church today. The pastor, uh, you know, only God. Only God can help somebody in a case like that. I can only, only imagine how they're feeling today. But you know God can, he can minister, can Praise God. Would you just join with me? Let's just say a special prayer. Amen. For Pastor Preston on his wife, family. Father God, we pray today. We pray, God, that you, in your love and in your wisdom, God, in your touch, oh God, Father, we just pray that you'll comfort this family, Father. Let them look beyond the horizon and see, God, their son, amen, is in the presence of God, we pray. God, that you'll minister to that family, that church family today. God, you'll bless them and help them like only you can. God will give you glory and power. Amen. In Jesus' name, name, amen. Praise God. Would you bring your tithes and offerings up? Thank you for being, amen, generous. Don't forget our feeding ministry. It's still going. We still need your help. Okay? Praise God. I want to pray over you. Amen. 
Amen. I'll hear all from it again. Father, we pray today, God, that you'll bless, multiply, bring it back to the families, God. Father, we are looking at a brand new year just right around the corner. And God, in this year, we're praying that you'll bless us. Amen. Let us prosper and be in hell, even as our soul does prosper. And God, we will give you the praise and give you the glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for souls that's going to be saved. Thank you for homes and lives that are going to be changed for the good because of your love and your grace and your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Praise God, we have access. Oh, yeah. Amen. Right into the throne room. Direct line. Call unto me, he said, and I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things. Yes. Amen. That you know not of. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful group of people. Amen. So good to see Ashley and Trent here this morning. Little Abe, I know I've already mentioned them, but uh, just precious. Praise God. Beautiful family. Yes. Grandma and Grandpa back there glowing. <laughs> <laughs> Makes Christmas a lot different, doesn't it? You may have a baby back in the house. I know uh, our our grandson prayed for him. He was feeling a little a little sickly there yesterday, but he was he powered through it. And <laughs> I had some big friends I was texting back and forth wishing them Merry Christmas and was asking how things were going. It was about about two o'clock, I guess, in the afternoon, and I said, I feel like I need a place to hide. Amen. <laughs> I was just a, amen. I needed, I thought, Lord have mercy. I had all that I could take for just a few moments. I needed a break. Amen. But I uh, had all kinds of exciting things happen. your ears. It's so good to see you here today. I mean, look at the person beside of you there and tell them just how beautiful they are. This morning, turn with me if you would to to the uh, first chapter of Luke. And we're just following in here of the day after Christmas. And how many of you can handle one more message about Christmas, about the birth of Jesus? every Sunday about that, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> did I say, what did I say, Luke chapter 1? <laughs> Luke chapter 2. Go to Luke chapter 2. You don't want to read that much, do you? Well, I can't keep you standing up that long. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 13. chapter 2. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Verse 15 says, So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said, to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord hath, has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they, were, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which they were told, that were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. Amen. Praise God. Would you just stretch your hand and pray for me? We'll ask God to just, and as you're praying, I just 
I invite you to just do like what we've read here and take just a moment and glorify God. Hallelujah. And praising Him for the things which you have seen and the things you have heard and the things you've experienced about this beautiful gift that God sent the world. His Son, Jesus. Praise God. Father, we love you and we praise you. And God, we give you glory. And Mary said, Oh, magnify the Lord for the things that he has done in my life. Lord, we magnify you here today. The psalmist said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Praise God. Lord, we love you here this morning, and I pray, God, that you will give me an anointing, God, to preach your word. God, anoint me to speak and anoint our ears and hearts to hear, and we'll give you the glory, we'll give you the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Praise God. Praise God. I want to speak to you just for the next few moments today on this day after Christmas and just remind you of what truly transpired on that not so silent night. We sing the song Silent Night but when you read the story and you find out the true story about Christmas, find out the true story about the birth of Jesus, we realize that there was not a whole lot of things silent about that night at all. There was a lot of things happening. And there was a lot of things going on. The first thing that I want to remind you of today is we see and understand that through Mary being chosen to bring forth the Son of God into this world, that that should remind us all today. I want to bring you three little things here just to, to set this off and to get us going here this morning. But the first point is, is ordinary people do extraordinary things. Christmas should remind us all of that, all of this. And, the, and seeing Mary and seeing that God chose her and that God, when the angels went and spoke to the shepherds out in the field, he was involving and interjecting into the world something that we all need to grab a hold of here today. I don't know how you feel about yourself today or your walk with God or what God has planned for you in 2022, but I want you to know that this story should remind you that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Think about the times and the things in your life where God, as I was reminding myself, as I was studying this and, and pondering this thought, I thought all the things in my life that where God has spoke to me and dealt with me has usually always come. It hasn't been through extraordinary measures or like the skies opened up and like we read about some here with the shepherds and what they experienced, but my life has been just constituted and having things people coming, just ordinary people speaking into my life and encouraging me and helping me and putting their arms around me and saying, hey, you can make it one more time. You can make it one more day. Never give up. Keep holding on. Keep marching on. All these different things. Ordinary people in life are doing extraordinary things. The second thing we should learn about this is that peace was not everywhere. When Jesus was born, when Jesus came, and when the fullness of time had came, the Bible said, when the fullness of time had come and it's time for Jesus to be born, it was a time not of peace. It was a time of darkness. It was a time of oppression. It was a time of sadness. It was a time, amen, that some of us could all, I, I, I'd like to, I don't want to get negative here this morning, but I'm just saying this world that we've been living in for the past two years, we all probably could relate just a little bit. We can relate just a tad to what, when you turn on the news, amen, every single morning, if you 
do that, I, I urge you and I, and I uh, want to give you some advice maybe that will help you and has helped me some as I try first before I turn on the news, I try to get into a devotion or try to get into the Word of God first and let me hear what He's saying before I hear what they're saying. Because if I just listen to what they're saying, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be depressed. But the world was in a sad, a dark, and a very, very troublesome time. And peace was not everywhere. But I want to remind you of this. Peace was somewhere. I heard that this week and it spoke to my heart. Amen. And in that manger, praise God, in that little quiet manger at the moment, at the time, in the little lowly stable, amen, that we read about in the story, the very Son of God, the very Prince of Peace, amen, was being birthed into the world. And God was speaking then a very troublesome and a very dark and a very trying time, but He cried out with a baby's cry saying, Peace is coming to your life. Peace is coming. And peace was somewhere. So today, if you're looking for peace, you're probably not going to find it everywhere. But I'm telling you, you can find it somewhere. And His name is Jesus Christ. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the one that gives peace. He's the only way you can experience true peace is through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Third, supernatural things were happening in the middle of sadness and darkness. So I urge you today, no matter how dark or how sad that your life may be today, you may be here today and you may say Christmas has been a very tough time for me. Christmas has been a very dark time for me. And I've been depressed and I am lonely. I have sad. I have suffered loss this year. And I'm hurting. But I'm telling you today, if you are sad and if you are hurting and if you find yourself in a dark place like the world was in when Jesus came, we see that supernatural things were taking place in the middle of sadness and darkness. Angels appeared to Mary and Joseph. Think about it. Angels appeared to both of them, spoke to them and said, hey, things are beginning to change. Things are going to be begin to happen like you've never seen before. And I know you don't understand it. And even Mary said, how can this be? How can this be? And I want you to know you may be asking the question today. You may be in a situation that seems like there's no way out and there's no hope. And you may be saying, preacher, how can this be? I'm telling you the same Holy Spirit, the same power of God that moved up on, praise God, the little blessed Mary girl that day is the same power, hallelujah, that can touch you this morning. The same power of God that can take your sadness and take your oppression and take your depression and anxiety and put peace and love and joy and strength in your heart is here and available today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Elizabeth and Zacharias. God was speaking. Angels were speaking to them. John, the Baptist, forerunner of Jesus Christ, was going to be born. Even such a miracle that when Mary came, after she had met, had, Elizabeth had been told she was having a baby. And it was a miracle. She was old. Her husband was old. It shouldn't be happening. But God said, you're going to have a baby. And she was pregnant. She was going to have a baby. But when Jesus and Mary came, Mary was carrying Jesus and she stepped in. And as soon as she said, how you doing, Elizabeth? The Bible says that John the Baptist, the baby, leaped in her womb. Praise God. Hallelujah. Miracles, miraculous signs. Things are going on during this dark and sad time. God was on His way. Salvation was on its way. Remedy for sin was on its way. Promises were being revealed and fulfilled. Hope was being transferred to the hopeless. Help was coming to the helpless. The heavens were filled with singing. Stars were shining brighter than they ever shined before. They were dancing in the sky. People were noticing something was going on. So 
nothing silent about that night. And a lot of things happening. A lot of things moving. A lot of things going on. Praise God. What a miracle that the God of the universe chose to come to earth as a baby. It can be easy. It can be an easy. It can be easy to question how this could be. And that's exactly what Mary did when the angel Gabriel greeted her with the news that she would conceive the Son of God. And Gabriel responded, and the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is born, he who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. I love the true meaning of Christmas. That God, the creator of the universe, sent the very best gift. And it satisfies the whole list of wants. I'm telling you, from the White House to the outhouse, it doesn't matter how much money you have or how little you have. This gift that was sent to you fits perfect. Amen. It works. It will take care of what ails you. It will fix the problems going on in your family. It will fix the problems going on in your marriage. It will fix the problems going on in your mind. It will fix the problems going on in your heart. Praise God. I'm telling you, this gift that God sent this world, your sick body will heal. Your sick body, if you need a touch from God, it will touch you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a perfect gift for every human on this planet. For this is how much John 3, 16 out of the Passion Translation. Listen to this. For this is how much God loved the world. He gave His one and only unique Son as a gift so that everyone who believes in Him will never perish but experience everlasting life. Yes. Hallelujah. God did not send His Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but to be its Savior yes. and rescue it. Think with me for a moment that God would valiantly and violently come after humanity like He did. The Bible tells us that the kingdom of God suffered violence and a violent take it by force. And we think of Jesus being the Prince of Peace and we think about love and we think about all those things that God is. But when we see Him, when He knew that we were lost, I want you to think about you and your children. I want you to think about you and your grandchildren. One of them goes missing. One of them shows, they get a call one day and says, hey, hey, my, my, your grandson's missing, or your son or daughter's missing. What then would you do? What would you do as a father? What would you do as a mother? You would rise up with everything that is within you, and you would hunt till you could not hunt anymore, and you would search until you could not search anymore, and you would fight whatever you had to fight. You would go through anything you had to go through to get to your son or to get to your daughter. And I'm telling you, that's what our God did. When He knew we lost us through Adam and Eve, through sin in the Garden of Eden. But the Bible says that before the foundation of the world, that Jesus Christ was slain before the foundation of the world was ever created. God had a way because He loves you. Yeah. He cares about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. What an awesome yeah. What an awesome yeah. God loved us. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, God loves me. God loves you. God so loved. God shouted when Jesus was born. 400 years of silence. God was silent. God had not spoken. The prophets, there was no prophetic voice in the earth until this day. Until the fullness of time had come. And what did God shout when He shouted? He shouted, I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. Don't ever allow the enemy to lie to you and make up some tale to cause you to ever or question God's love for you. You can try.
Hallelujah. Love gives. Love sacrifices. It's comfort. It's will. Listen, we've said this time and time again. I know I've said it before. You can, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Amen. Hallelujah. If you love, it's going to cost you something. Praise God. When you love somebody, you're willing, praise God, to pay any price to help them. Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loved us. Say, God loves me. He loves you today. He loves you today. You say, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I've done. Listen, it does not matter. It does not matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. His arm is not short. His ear is not too heavy or far away from you that it can't hear your cry. And it can't reach you no matter how deep you are. I'm telling you, God's arm can touch you. God's hand can reach you. Praise God. God is a giver. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. That you through his poverty might be rich. So amazing that he would do this without the promise that he would receive anything in return. People say that a God they love, the God kind of love is love. Love that's unconditional. But I'm going to tell you even a better definition of that. It's a love without any chance. It's a love without any Anything expected in return. It's a love that just says, I love you regardless of what you say or what you do or how you respond to me or how you act towards me or what you look like. It's a love, Tito. It's God's love for you. Praise God will never change. You can never make God not love you. No matter how mean or how or you may raise your fist to him and tell him you hate him. You may say, God, you have forsaken me. I will have nothing to do with you. But I'm telling you, God's love will never change. God's love will never retract. His love is always reaching. His love is always giving. His love is always there for you to receive it if you'll just take it. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so amazing. The reckless, it's a reckless love for humanity. But he did it anyway. His unconditional love. What do you think? What do you think about this? If a man has a hundred sheep, it's in Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 through 14. If a man has a hundred sheep, one of them goes astray. Does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek the one that is strayed? And if he should find it, assuredly, I say to you, he rejoices more over that, that sheep than, than over, he rejoices over that sheep than over the 99 that did not go astray. Even so, is it not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish? That seems reckless to me. Think about that. There's nothing about that that makes any sense. You know, you've got 99 sheep you're, you're responsible for. Them. One gets out. One gets away. Most of us would just go, well, you're on your own, bud. Uh, you know, that's a bad mistake on your part. But I can't leave 99 for the one. But God, but God, Hallelujah. That, that but God, that, that but there is such a wonderful thing because we have all kinds of things going on that we think about. But when we hear the word but, that conjunction. 
place in there. Whatever is over here in the past before the but, and it matters no longer. Once you say the but, hallelujah, changes everything. But God, because of His love for you, and here's where it matters the most, because I tell you this, if it was your son, or if it was your daughter that was lost, then it would be important to leave the 99 and go after the one, because I'm telling you, I was the one. You was the one. You're the one. Somebody, somewhere, hallelujah,
And he died and he paid a price for you because he loves you and he gave you a gift. I had a gift here this morning. And I'm going to say it right here. And if you want it, it's yours. All you have to do is walk up here and get it. It's free. I don't know what you might find. But there's something wonderful in it. There's something that you can use. If you 
you live to be 80, if you live to be 90, 120, however old you may live, compared to eternity, it's nothing. And to be lost without God, whenever God said, I sent you the very best gift, and all you had to do was get it. It had your name on it. All you had to do was get it and open it and believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised Him from the dead. And the Bible says that you will be saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says that every knee will bow. Look at your knee while you're sitting here. Every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You can do it now. Or you can do it when it's too late. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't live throughout eternity going, why? Why? The devil's greatest lie he tells, hell's full of people right now. That he said, just wait till next Sunday. Just wait till you know you've got things going on. You got a party to go to, New Year's. You know you're you know better. You just just wait till walk. Just start fresh and anew at the new year. You may not see tomorrow. Today's the day of salvation. So come on. If you're here today, as they come to the piano and begin to play, if you're here today and you're lost without Jesus, if you're here and you're backslidden, you've grown cold on God this year, what a wonderful time it'd be. What a wonderful day it'd be to make things right. And to just open the gift. It's a gift and it's for you. Praise God. Would you just bow your heads with me and let's pray. You can pray right there where you're sitting. But the Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart. I'm going to ask you, urge you with importance and with a sense of urgency, make the step, come and kneel at an altar and ask Jesus to forgive you. And if you feel Him dealing with you and you know right now if your heart quit beating and your air went out of your lungs, ask yourself a question. Do I know for sure that I'm ready to meet God? Because the Bible tells us that these things were written. God's given us His Word that you can know for sure. You can know for sure that you're ready to meet God. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to question. But you can know. These altars are open and I want you to come and pray. I know that in a crowd this size, on this day, you think, well, there's, uh, surely there's no one here that doesn't know Jesus. But I know that God placed this message and put it in my heart for somebody here today. God loves you. And God's after you. You hear me? God's after you. Because he loves you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Would you just stand? Everyone, would you stand? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God.
Praise God. There may be others. And then there may be others that need to come and pray. Come on, these altars are open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 